Hello and welcome to episode number 122 of Super Kali Funnelistic. My name is Christian Rauchenwald and today I'm going to show you how you can use ClickFunnels page editor to optimize your pages for mobile views. So that said, before we actually get to that, as always, quick welcome to all of you who are new and watch for the first time. Make sure to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner somewhere here so you do not miss out any future content. And now let's go into the ClickFunnels page editor. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna quickly create a new funnel and I'm just gonna pick the classic process. I'm gonna say we wanna collect emails. Uh, we're gonna group that in demo and we're gonna give it a name and call it a uh, mobile page editor. Yeah, And we're gonna say build the funnel and there we go. In a second or two, maybe a little longer. Yeah. So here we are, now we have the opt-in page. We'll have to pick a layout. We're actually gonna quickly look for the blank layout. So we're gonna start from scratch. If, oh, there we go, blank template. And so we create everything ourselves. And from there, we actually go to edit the page. We're not gonna worry about the thank you page. It's not about building the funnel. It's just about understanding the dynamics that are involved with mobile optimization. Consider that it's very important that your funnel has to look amazing on mobile too. Why? Simply because depending on your niche up to 95 or even more percent of traffic may be on mobile devices. So your funnel can be the prettiest funnel out there on desktop. If you don't take care of mobile view, you will have like a horrible conversion rate. Now, um, the blank template starts out with one section, one row and one text which is actually already great. It's just gonna lead the text and we're gonna start and add a headline. I'm not gonna bother with like actually putting in the right content um, because again, it's not about the purpose of showing you how to build an opt-in page or something like that. It's about the mobile view. We're gonna add a sub headline and then we're actually going to add uh, two, two, uh, a row with two columns. And on the left, we're gonna put a video and on the right, we're going to have some more text. And then eventually we're going to have like probably a timer. If you, for example, think about your OFA uh, rich page where you promote the next OFA and below that we will have like another piece of text, but that we actually will quickly modify and make shorter because it will be like about the deadline of the next sign up. And then we'll have uh, an input element input for email and we'll have a button to actually send the form. So obviously what we need to do is like the email thing needs to be set to email and the button needs to be set to submit form. And in case of, and just so on a side note, in case of building a OFA bridge page, you would now also go to settings general and put in your ClickFunnels OFA affiliate link up here. So whenever somebody opts in on your list, you, they will get added to, to your list, but they will go straight away then to the One Funnel Away page. So you don't even need the thank you page then, yeah? Now, that would actually be already a great opt-in page. Why? We have a video, we have some text, we have like uh, urgency or scarcity with the countdown and everything, if we save that right now and we go to, yeah, we give it a random title, uh, opt-in mobile demo and we save that and we then go to the preview everything is visible without scrolling so the user sees everything they need to see without scrolling meaning the click to action is above the fold like above their part where they have to scroll for and that's the really important thing here that's what you want to look for but however if we switch to mobile and you can do that by right clicking somewhere and going on inspect this will bring up in Google Chrome, the developers console. And there, if you look closely on the top left where my mouse currently is, you have an icon that you can click on that will turn on the mobile view. And now here in the middle, you see currently it says iPhone X, but I can select different devices like an iPad. Uh, I usually have it on iPhone X. Yeah, so up iPhone X or in that case, on iPhone X, it actually would look theoretically fine, but that simulating the iPhone X screen size, it doesn't uh, cons consider that there's a bottom bar in Safari on iPhone. So in that case, we would have a problem because our button is not visible without scrolling. Yeah. Now, so that's where mobile view optimization comes in. And in a lot of other cases, for example, you may want to have a bigger headline. We're going to quickly simulate that like biggest headline possible, which on laptop, or desktop still looks okay. Yeah, it still is like 
I mean, the size is really huge, but it still is fine and everything is above the fold. However, if we switch now to mobile view, you see that that is not okay. Now, if you don't optimize your page for mobile view, then people will not bother to stay on the page uh, and for sure will not opt in. So how do you fix that? One of the things is for each of the text elements, when you go in their settings by clicking on the gear icon, you can actually click here, you see the font size and below you have the mobile size and you can unlock that so that it's not linked anymore to the wheels or to the desktop size and define a different mobile size. Now, when you do that, you actually want to switch into mobile view in the editor first and that you can do on the top left by clicking on mobile. And then you wanna modify the font size here, maybe let's say 36 pixels, yeah? And it already looks better, yeah? Now, the, the next thing that you want to consider again is like that your buttons are above the fold. So if we refresh that page here real quick, we'll see the headline adjusted, but our button is still not where it needs to be. So what can we do now? There's an easy fix for that. And that easy fix is actually, or wrong page, that easy fix is actually to make certain things mobile or desktop only. So we would, for example, take this timer here or this additional text and we go in its settings and at the bottom you see all mobile only, desktop only. So we would make this text now, actually we would first uh, clone it and now we would make this one desktop only and we click on the second one and make it mobile only and will take us to the mobile only view automatically. And now we're gonna move this additional text below the button and save our changes. So this way, when we now refresh the page, we see, we see our input and button came further up because the text is now down here below on mobile. And when we switch back to the desktop view, we see the text is above, yeah. It makes the most sense to do this with, with, with texts and, uh, and similar content that's like not images or videos. Why, for example, if you would integrate your video in, in desktop view and mobile only view and set both to autoplay. Um, the user visits your website on a computer on a desktop and both videos would start to autoplay and most likely with a slight delay in audio. And if he were to try to pause or mute the video, he actually would only mute the desktop video but could not mute the mobile video because he doesn't see it. And so you never want to do that with embedded videos, yeah, to have them desktop or mobile only if they are set to autoplay. If they're not set to autoplay, you can consider it, but I still would not do it. And you also don't want to do that with images if it's different images, yeah. If you use multiple different images, so for example, you use a picture of, I don't know, a rainbow for desktop and a picture of a sunset on mobile, um, it's a very bad idea because depending on the browser that the people are using, the browser will load both images, although only one will be visible to the user, which means your page will load slower than it could potentially do, which means your bounce rate will be higher. So there is like, while you can do a lot of things, it doesn't make sense to do a lot, like everything. Yeah? Another way to do things is of course, you can clone um, whole elements and then you can say, okay, this whole element here is like uh, desktop only and or row in that case, not element, yeah. And that row is mobile only. Um, again, that's something that doesn't make sense because when you update something, like you would update the countdown, you would need to update it in the desktop view and then in the mobile view. When you wanna change the video, again, you need to do things twice. When you fix a typo, you, knew, you need to do things twice. It, it, it makes sense in certain um, situation. For example, if you look at my homepage funnel, you see that's the top area on, on computer on desktop and when we look on mobile it has different copy and is arranged differently so in that case um, that element here or that row you don't see that it's a row here in the in the actual page but that whole thing here that is a row and it exists twice once for desktop once for mobile however the graphic the logo is the same graphic that's loaded on both versions now it still is not 100% perfect because that means the logo is actually too big for mobile. So on mobile, I could say file size, but um, it's also a very small graphic compared to, for example, the background picture, yeah? Um, so that are some of the things that you want to consider. And that are the basics of using the mobile editor. There's, there's no rocket science to it. Um, pretty much you look at things on desktop and make sure they look fine. And after that, you switch to the mobile view and you start by fixing the font sizes. 
And then actually either you use your phone or again, you use Chrome's developer tools by right clicking inspect to simulate simulate the mobile view. And then you just make sure that your top area and the, the, the spacings that you use also, also match up or add up. And um, if not, you go to the mobile editor and you simply decide if it makes sense to maybe hide an element on on desktop, yeah, so or on mobile. So you would make this like desktop only to ensure that text is only visible here. All right, I, 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 I actually picked something else now, yeah. Um, and desktop only, yeah. And on mobile, you would actually, you know, and like have a different view, maybe slightly different content. Um, it's worth considering, like when you look at um, pages that have long sales copy, one of the things that you want to do is um, clone your click to action buttons. Because on desktop, if we look at my page here, it's not like a long page, but let's assume that it's all sales copy. And on desktop, we would have maybe a button like, I don't know, like somewhere here in the middle and then a button on the bottom. Yeah. And then on desktop would be fine. However, on mobile, that's way much more distant. It's a bigger distance that users have to scroll to actually get to the next button, which means um, some will drop off because they're too lazy, which also means you should simply clone your buttons when they are already configured and then put them in multiple uh, positions, like split it up, just switch to mobile view and basically check, you know, like maybe every two screens. So you scroll until your um, our funnel is not big enough. But we actually can make it bigger real quick by just cloning the whole section a couple of times. So, so you would simply check, okay, if you scroll around two screens, you would place another click to action button. It may not always make sense. It, apply, it, it, it depends on your funnel, but that would usually be my advice. And then you make those buttons mobile only. So only people on mobile devices actually see them because on desktop, it would, re would look ridiculous. It would mean you have like a button, like more than, you know, like multi or you multiple click to action, action buttons would be visible. Like when people scroll through the funnel now, uh, so now that's pretty much it. Like those are the basics. Um, the rest is totally up to you, like to play around a little bit and get used to it. It's not hard, but it's something crucial to consider again, um, considering the amount of mobile traffic that there is nowadays. If you don't consider it, you will have like way worse results and it's worth going through it and ensuring that everything looks neat and nice on mobile as well. So yeah. Um, also consider that your page leave pop-ups, so the pop-up that appears on desktop, if you configured it, when people try to leave your page, does not exist on mobile. Like it exists, but it doesn't trigger when people do something with their fingers, yeah? Um, so consider if, if, for example, you need that pop-up, consider using buttons with the action trigger pop-up on mobile to trigger the pop-up, yeah? So that's it, thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions, leave your comments below. Join our Facebook group, ask there. We're always happy to help. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if it helped you somehow. And yeah, see you tomorrow with another episode of Super Califanilistic. Till then, bye-bye.